And I'm here with your host, Jit Jack, on the attack. Brow. And tonight's topic, you know, I always like forget to do this. I thought my spiel is um, we are talking about neurodivergency and neurodiversity, neurodiversity in communities of color. Like we have some amazing guests for you tonight, um, and all that like great, amazing stuff. Make sure if you are listening to us. Um, out there in podcast land. You check us out on Facebook every week, um, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on Facebook.com slash New Kai Tree. Um, if you're watching us live right now, make sure you get the streaming experience because I do all, all these cool sound effects and audio editing on anchor.fm slash New Kai. So check us out there and we're available wherever podcasts are streaming. So Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Beanpod, all that good stuff. Make sure you check us out there. And follow us on IG. We have a really popping IG page. We on the Instagram doing a, doing a damn thing. You know, it's, it's, it's so much fun. Um, and, um, yeah, if you're tuning in just now, make sure you love like love this post. Loves get a lot farther than likes, y'all. We need y'all to love this. So make sure you love this post. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever we post a new video oops, excuse me, ooh, on our channel, and make sure you share this, y'all. Share it. Let people know what we're talking about here. You can join this conversation. It's going to be beautiful tonight. I am burping. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to edit that out. Um, but as you know, we pour... Give me all your money. And I will take you higher. Give me all your money right now. A new kai slash support and give us like a little bit of that coin it can be a dollar a month five dollars a month ten dollars a month whatever you want to do but like we're really like honestly i'm out here trying to get a better camera so if y'all can get me that lo- like that logitech stream cam i'll be happy and i'll stop asking for money <laughs> quite honestly um but before we get into our first segment we want to bring on and introduce our guests for tonight um these are some of our like great friends like in real life and online people that like start and motivate really converse, really great conversation, have really great things to say about this subject. So we're gonna bring in and um say hello to the people, y'all. So we have um Sophia V and Jay with us here tonight. So let people know like your name, your pronouns, what you do, who you are, like what you're bringing to this conversation before like we get into the show. Um, say so hi. I'm- Hi, I'm Safia. Um, I am the mother of a child who is diagnosed to be on the autism spectrum. Uh, he's eight years old. He's going to be nine. So we've been going through this. We've been having this life experience. We started when diagnosis when he was about six months old. I was able to catch it pretty quickly that something was a little bit different. So. So we got him early intervention from the time he was six months old, and it's 
been a beautiful journey. And um, yeah, so I'm a mom who's very interested in advocating for my child. And when I can, I advocate for other, especially black women who have children with special needs in the New York City educational system. All right. I say. <laughs> Jay, go ahead. Let us. Um... Hey, y'all. I'm Jade or Jaden. Um, I don't use pronouns, so just my name. Uh, please and thank you. Um, I am autistic. Um, I uh, have not been formally diagnosed, uh, but I do have um, several uh, people that I know. Um, like my partner's uh, parents are uh, both uh, psychologists, um, that one that specialize in autism and they confirm that I have it. We'll talk about- Oh, well, um, that's the diagnosis. I mean- My book, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll, say, oh. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about um, access to care specific, specifically for uh, people on the autism spectrum and adults uh, later. Um, to show why that is um, a difficulty. Um, I am uh, gender fluid. Um, so I'm also, I am black, trans, autistic, and I'm also hard of hearing. And we'll oh. kind of talk about um, some special, some, um, that's my cat, Mishka. She just got spayed today, so she's kind of drunk. Oh, ah, Mishka. <laughs> uh, but we can also talk about um, some um, hearing and um, other disabilities that go along with autism or kind of tend to be co comorbid with the autism. All right. I'm I'm definitely excited. So I'm I've, I've been wanting to do this episode for a long time. Like this is like one of like my passions in life, like not only as just like a content creator, like but I'm an educator at heart. Like I'm a teacher and like I love doing this and having these conversations and like I hate to say like awareness because like I really feel like niggas should know. But like niggas don't know. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, can y'all hear us better? Um, I, the mic was lower than I realized um, out there in Facebook land. Like, is everything good? We good to go? Let us know. Let us know. Um, but we're gonna keep it pushing. And let's get into our first segment. And that is the tea. So like, come on and sip it, cause it's hot sis. And so for the tea tonight, we're gonna talk about a couple of things. We're gonna ask, I guess some great questions, but before like we get into our combo combo, I re um I just want to break down Reza a little bit more. All right, that's good. I don't check, want it to pop. Um, I, how y'all hearing us? Like our guests? Like are we good? Y'all can hear us, okay? Safia and, and Jade. Okay. All right. So let's keep it like so. Let's get us. So I'm gonna break down what. Um, so neuro, like when we talk about neurodivergency and neurodiversity, like neuro meaning of like the brain and of like the nervous, nervous system, of course, like diverse meaning speaking of like diversity or like, um, like a mixture of like samples and people and conditions. And, um, I really want to get to, so I made, I, I made this little <laughs> flow chart. So walk with me, talk with me. So this is fact. And this is Pat's brain, okay? Um, these are Pat's friends, and they also have brains, and all their brains are different. Um, I have my little teaching moment. So some people's brains are similar enough that they can, like, they, they behave in ways that are categorized and labeled. So some of these labels are typical, schizophrenic, bipolar, autistic, and epileptic. So that's just a name to name a few. A few. Um. So what is neurodiversity? So um, all of these labels except typical like indicate um, neurodivergence. That is a deviation from a brain that society's ex um, societal expectations of normalcy. And I really want to drive that home. Like these are based on like colonial constructs and what white people think of how the brain works. Just to make that clear. Like I don't, this is like a clinical definition. I don't, as like an educator and a professional, I don't wholeheartedly agree with this definition. But this is the definition that we got. So not all neurodivergence um, is diagnosed or even diagnosable. 
That means not all people who are perceived as neurotypical are in fact so. So neurodivergence is neither bad nor good. A person can be born with it or acquire, with, um, acquire it. Um, and it's up to each neurodivergent individual to decide what, um, what help they desire and what help like they need. And so Pat and her friends are comfortable with their individual um, divergences and their diversity as a group and they support each other and their right to self-determination and they also value their strengths um, each other brings to their group of friends so that's what I wanted to like just break down before we get into the meat of our com oh, of our conversation and we have a couple of questions for our guest tonight um, so I get like the general question is like what is your like divergency called when were you diagnosed uh, like as if Safia speaking as a parent like you can talk about that and um Jade you can definitely talk about like your own experience like regarding that as to like you figuring some of out it already what was up just go in a little bit more. Um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah um Safia like Safia Jade whoever wants to go first so like what's like what's your divergency like and when were you diagnosed? Uh, so I am autistic, and so we kind of talked about uh, diagnoses uh, earlier for autistic people, and so um, so like when we talk about diagnoses, I think it's really important to talk about access to care, right? Um, because as people of color, as black people especially, um, access to care looks very different because uh, one, like uh, mental health is stigmatized um, in our community, but then also because we just don't fucking trust doctors, right? And for very good reasons. And so um, like access to care looks very different in, in, um, in like, in the communities of color because uh, we don't we don't go to the doctor as much and that includes like therapy and things like that um, additionally um, especially with autism um, people of color especially black people we are a lot of times um, our our behaviors are automatically assumed as violent Right. So um, I was actually uh, told that I had anger issues and um, whenever I would. So like part of autism is um, like we perceive things differently. We perceive language differently. We perceive intentions differently. We perceive sensory sensory stimuli differently. And so um, uh, whenever I would have issues perceiving sensory issues, I would scream and I was told I, would ha I had anger issues. And, um, and so I wasn't actually diagnosed or I haven't been diagnosed, but I didn't even consider that I had autism until I was in my thirties. Um, so yes, that is uh, a lot of my diagnosis journey. Thank you. I, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Again, I'm doing a lot of learning on this one, and um, Jade has like taught me a few things online. I'm just like so grateful for Jade's presence in my life. Um, Same. But um, yeah, thank you for saying that because like I think um, I think people don't again like as we are unpacking it in the colonial belly with a anti-colonial edge, right? So when we when we unpack it that way, it's like when you say that a lot of what we are categorized as is violent, like a lot of our actions are like just thought of as violent, like that aspect of the narrative that they have on people of color or colonized people um, just like goes to continue to help like foster that image. So it's like, okay, now even if they diagnose you, it still like puts, you know what I'm saying, like this, when, it, when, it, when it's put on a person of color as I've seen it in a person who doesn't who gets to observe it as an art teacher because we don't necessarily like get to dive into it like we should be as art teachers you know what i'm saying but as a person that has to observe it in students um when it is presented in colonized children mm -hmm. 
it's like still treated as a disciplinary issue. Right. You know, and it's like un it's just unfair, but at the end of the day it's the colonized issue because they just wanna continue to foster that idea that something is wrong rather than something is different and that different is perfectly perfect. <laughs> like different is perfectly fine, you know, and and has its place and does not have some like alternate other place in society. It is in and of itself important to what it is that we as people need to experience and need to experience with each other. So Yeah, especially like being black in like the public education system as like a student that was I'm not like neurodivergent like to the fact that I'm aware like but I was definitely like what they would l have labeled as like a troubled child like growing up like I would act out like I would finish my work and be like okay let's party and like that's not acceptable like you got to sit down and be quiet and I feel like everyone's different everyone learns different we have different learning styles and only now like in education are we really coming to a place where we like accept like a student's home life or even like teach that to teachers the students home life and like the way that their brain works impact the impacts the way that they receive education like ne like literally like in the past five like i've been doing this for like almost 15 years like in the past three years this has become a conversation among like pedagogues and like primary and elementary school like net like net like that recent so like don't feel like if you're a kid that grew up and like like you just like you just couldn't cut it in school and it's not because you weren't like smart it was just because like they weren't like tapping into the way that you learn and like i say that to say well so sophia actually this is a perfect segue for you girl um what has that been like for you like as a mom like sort of just like navigating that space for your son so i'm gonna start by um just discussing how he got diagnosed and then I'm going to talk about that because that is going to be it's just a long journey with that but um how my son was diagnosed is that when he was born I kind of noticed immediately that some of his behavior even as a brand newborn I mean 2 days old I kind of recognized that some of his behavior was a little bit different than my older son. Um, so I was paying attention immediately. And I think I've been fortunate in that I have a very supportive family. I have a niece who has Rett syndrome. So I watched my sister sort of navigate what it's like to have a special needs child. So when it was my turn, it was a lot easier for me was able to process the fact that my child may be different. I didn't know exactly what it was, but he would always would never make eye contact. And even though um, he was that young, human beings evolved for newborns to learn from their parents by initially just making eye contact and building that bond with their mother by looking into their eyes while you're breastfeeding or while you're bathing, kissing, hugging your baby, they look at you like, and he didn't do that. And I, I recognized that within two days of him being born. Uh, I didn't pediatrician about it at first because at that small, you know, there's still so much space for development and I didn't want to make a rush judgment. And I don't think any reputable pediatrician would be in a hurry to diagnose a, a infant child that's only a few months old that's not in their milestones they typically give you um they'll say oh well if he hasn't done this yet give it a month or two and then we'll see if he doesn't do that come back at six months he my son had his six month checkup and i walked into the doctor's office and i was like i think we may need early intervention i did like a little test at home where i jangled keys in front of him and he didn't respond to the jangling keys i called his name he didn't respond to his name i took my finger and i went back and forth in front of his eyes to see if he would follow and he didn't so that at six months typically they are already able to uh they're like being they're able to push up 
babies are rolling over. He wasn't hitting any of those milestones. So I knew something was different. Um, he got early intervention right away. And we started the, the round of genetic testing, um, neurological testing. And actually all of those came up normal. So genetic testing came up normal. He saw the neurologist. The neurologist wasn't able to uh, make any determination about why he was not hitting those milestones. And to this day, we actually do not have a diagnosis uh, with a name. Like I can't say, oh, my child has Asperger's, my child has Tourette's or anything like that. Um, he's considered on the autism spectrum with an intellectual and developmental delay. So my child does need a lot of support. He is eight. He's going to be nine in November. He still does wear diapers. He's nonverbal. Um, but he does have his own ways of communicating. So once I saw that if you're able to make a connection with him, he can learn. That kind of is what pushed me to really, really that I got access to all of his educational rights, basically. Um, so we were going to talk about navigating the educational system. As a parent with a special needs child, I will say for me, uh, as Jade was just speaking about earlier, you know, there are layers of privilege when it comes to navigating the educational system with a child with special needs. And so my story is not typical. Um, me and Patrick have talked about it before and I was, I've been able to get access to a lot of services for my child, but part of that is because I was able to have access to people who could help me. And I also had the privilege of an employer. I was going through this journey in the beginning when you know we're setting everything up. I had the privilege of an employer who's like, "Oh, you need to uh, talk to the doctor. Okay. Oh, you need to take a day off to get your child tested. Okay. Oh, you need to get you need to go see your lawyer. Okay. I actually had to get a lawyer for my child because his educational rights were being violated. Um, one of the first things I noticed. Uh, when you're doing IEP meetings and things like that, is um, you're going to be offered the bare oh, wait, minimum. Explain, explain to the people out there what an IEP is. Thank you. Uh, IEP is an individualized education. So this is when you have a child in Wait, the, say that one the, more time. Like you kind of cut out. It's okay. Uh, you talking IEP, real Brooklyn right now. <laughs> I'm getting passionate, but it's an individual education plan, individualized education plan. So um, when you have a, who has special needs, it doesn't necessarily mean that your child even needs to be in special education. It just means your child needs support in some way. Some children have trouble sitting in in tests for long periods of time, so this allows your child to. Have have their spin up into smaller pieces. Some children get very overstimulated, and so they need their education plan needs to include the ability for the child to leave the room, have some cool down time, and then come back. Um, an education plan could even be for children who have physical, different physical differences or needs, special needs. Um, so if your child needs to be in a school building that has wheelchair accessible uh, uh, infrastructure in the building, it's going to be in their edu edu individualized educational plan as well. So when you see what happens to get your child an IEP is that you're the, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the child's teacher will be in the room, um, a representative from the school administration, I believe, the parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right, that's right. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and then- In New York, and this is in New York, this is in New York City, not New York State at large. This is in New York okay. City specifically. And like, 
Houston works in a similar way. So if you live in New York City and Houston, like it, this process is pretty similar. Okay. So, so you can discuss um, the Compare your child to what the skill of normalcy and, and you'll figure out what your child's deficit is and how they, what type of support they need. When you go to these IEP meetings, typically what's offered to you is a bare minimum. And in order to have a more, more comprehensive, you guys might hear him in the background. That's if y'all hear screaming, that's my child. <laughs> But oh no, this, this is a new country. This is real. It's real. Right, it's real life. It's real life. So, in order to get any type of, um, it, in order to, I guess, dispute what you offer to your child, then now you have to go into the territory of getting your own private uh, evaluations and have to prove essentially why your child needs more support. So this is where we talk about privilege, right? Because um, being able to access a private, being able to access private um, evaluations for your child, it's not free. You're not gonna get that through Medicaid. Yeah, most insurance won't even cover that. People have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to even get access to their own private evaluations to now bring into an IEP meeting to support their child, what their child needs. And my, I ended up getting so many services for my child is because I got access to a lawyer through the working at the time as well. This is again, where I'm talking about privilege. I was able to access a lawyer through someone who frequented my, my place of employment at the time. And through that lawyer, I was able to access private evaluations for speech, for behavior, for physical um, ability and things like that. And I was able to bring those to my IEP meetings. And through those private evaluations, now, the E has to then prove why their evaluations stand. They couldn't do that. And, and also, they didn't give me my child's evaluations. That was another thing, too. It's like they evaluate your child, create an education plan, but don't give you, the parent, access to the evaluation that brought them to the conclusion of what type of plan your child needs. Wait, they don't let you see the evaluation? I didn't know I that. Did Me neither. I, I believe, I mean, by law, by law, you have access to it. But is anyone giving it to you? Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. If mm. you're not requesting it, they just, they're, they're just telling you, here you go, your child gets one hour of physical therapy a week, one hour of uh, speech and enjoy. Right? A child like mine who is nonverbal, a child like mine who is like Jade mentioned being hearing impaired earlier, my child has hearing can, impaired. Can, 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 because I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like we're getting, I feel like we're getting into talking a lot about autism. Mm -hmm. And from my experience, people don't fucking know what autism is. They don't know what nonverbal means. Also, um, the hearing, the deaf and hear, and hard of hearing community doesn't like hearing impaired. So you're, you okay. just say like hard of, hard of hearing. Okay. But but I I think I think that I I would very much like for. For people, people to to understand what autism is, and and why it, why when when we talk talk about autism, that that knowing whether that person is ver is is verbal or semi-verbal 
or nonverbal is 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 important. Right. I extremely. I I completely unite and agree with that. Yeah. And that and like I feel like a lot of these like diagnoses and even labels are based on what you can like they assume you're capable to produce for the colony. Right. Like if you can't do anything for this like colonial sort of factorial industrial system, like and is that's gonna be limit to like limited like in their like assembly line of life that like white supremacy have sort of set out and laid. Um so oh, you're right. of no use to us. So that being said, to me, like the only way that we can actually as an anti colonial podcast define it is if we have you define it, Jade. Because otherwise the people who aren't experiencing it are defining it and that's essentially just based in Again, what um, Mick Sykes just said, which is like what it is that we can perceive is ca- is capable, and that's not that's not how we should be defining anything at and, all. And let that's alone why, like, what people are going through, let alone how brains are working, let alone how people are relating to each other. So, if you can, like, take your time and freaking like let us know what the hell autism is in the first place, so that we can get the shits right. Right, and that's why, like. We really wanted you on the show in the first place because I hear I listen I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of conversations around like autism, and it was just like, okay, where are the autistic the autistic people in this conversation? No, but like a lot of people like was like, and let's talk about this like that 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 is because. Autism is a communication disability, and so like, and so like, it 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 takes a shit ton of energy for me to communicate with allistics the way that allistics are people who are not autistic. It takes a lot of energy for me to 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 explain to them what autism is. And additionally, I don't have an holistic brain. I can't tell you what is different about my brain from your brain because I don't know your brain. The same way that you can't tell me what is different about my brain, you can tell me what is different about my actions. I can tell you what is different about your actions, but you can't tell me what is different about the way that you perceive the world versus the way that I perceive the world. But we do know that that is like where autism starts, is that we perceive the world differently. The way that we, the way that we take in sensory st- stimuli, uh, so like the way that we take in like lights and sound and, and, and tactile sensations is different. For me, that's the biggest part of my autism. The way that we process communication is different. And so Sophia made a a very good point in saying that that, um, she noticed that her, her son was learning, but just wasn't learning the way that holistics learn, you know, and and that's a very good point because um, there there's been studies done that when autistic people interact with other autistic people, we communicate we communicate with each other as as well as holistics communicate with each other, and and it's just it's. It's just that we communicate differently. I've been a witness to that. I've and it like it's it's like amazing and it made me like take a step back as a teacher, like when I witnessed that. I was like, wait, I don't know shit about like what I learned like I threw all that shit that I learned in college out the window. I was like, Okay, show me how your brain works and I like let my students show me and I fared so much better. It was so like as a paraprofessional, as someone that was like one on one, like with the kid, like I'm just like all right, fuck that. Like, okay, fuck this degree. Like, how did your brain work? Show me. 
and yeah. like let and they and it does like I've had like classes where I have nothing I have I've had nothing but um kids that were on the spectrum and it's been amazing like I've learned things about my own communication in that but like continue with what you were saying because you were hitting on something very poignant and like what was I saying right um, but we know that we communicate with each other better because we just communicate differently. Like, I don't understand, like, social pretense, like, social, um, like, nuances. I never get sarcasm, and I never get flirting. Uh, and, like, when we communicate with each other, it's just very direct and very, like, transparent, you know? Like, um like a communication, a, 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 a interaction with two verbal autistics would look more like, you know, it wouldn't be like, hey, how's your day? Oh, I'm doing quite all right. How's your day? Oh, I'm doing quite all right. How's the dogs? I don't understand why allistics do that. It would be like, hey, how's your day going? Oh, I feel like I'm pretty low on spoons today because I have been working more than I normally have and that you know, typically makes me low on spoons. Oh yeah, I understand that because last week I was working more than I normally have and it made me low on spoons. And also I feel like I know that you've been low on spoons because um, you've been interacting less on Facebook. That's that's more like how I communicate with my autistic friends. And it's it's just, I don't, I don't really understand holistics and why like, why why people lie to each other, even small lies, but that's a different topic. Um I feel like I've lost I've lost I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but it's not a different topic. Let me tell you why you're literally like in the exact same realm, right? It's because the reason that holistics lie is because the society, the colonial circumstances require that we not actually give a fuck about any of those details that you cited. I would much rather be having those conversations. I would much rather feel like people gave a fuck enough to actually know those details. And I would much rather be around people that, you know... I didn't feel like I was burdening with those details because there's also that feeling, right? So, like, where it's like, okay, like... Even if you do care about them, I know you're also going through your own freaking ridiculous colonial monstrosity. So let me not also burden you with the emotional weight when it's like, really, we're meant to literally hold our, each other's hand through this whole thing. And we have just fallen for the bullshit. Like, I like, I like, to me, like, I like, your brain can't accept the thing. bullshit. Your brain's like, like no. <laughs> to me, it's like, we have no. just fallen is- and accepted the bullshit. And we are the ones holding, and I can't, I, and I'm saying, we just because I, I I mean I guess like I can like you know assume I some holisticness yeah like I can assume <laughs> some holisticness but like I don't really fuck with none of this shits again like I don't necessarily talk to people that I have to say oh yeah I'm I, like I'm good like I don't necessarily talk to those people all day like am I able to do it yes like but it's more a level of training and I can like recognize that that's programming. called masking right and we're gonna get into that I later. can recognize that <laughs> I can recognize that programming and I feel like for the most part we all go through that fucking programming and some of us are really good at it and other of us just know just something it just no it's the bullshit we might have a breakthrough on this show tonight y'all I have <laughs> accepted that it's possible I just need it in real time yes Jay there, please there is a very important um intersection of being black and being autistic because you have to code switch you have to code switch to to white people in your blackness and then you have to translate your autistic thoughts to how holistic people think and both of those things are very false like like white people are very much like about um, like saying saying things um, that aren't true and like um, like shade. I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say, but you know what I mean. Like white people just don't say 
what they mean. Well, yeah, English English is the language of liars. Like th- this whole language is a language of falsehood because like there's so much indirectness in English. Like people like the bless your heart. Say English is the hardest language bless to learn for a reason because like there are so yeah. many like lies in the nuance of English that like when you become like a true English speaker you've mastered lying is what it is it's like, so real you can really say what you mean what I mean what you say like to the point where New York tell- like oh what's good what's good what's good what's good or like oh as per my last email just like make sure like you like you you redirect and like like it, uh, CC everyone like Please and just just to like really make sure you like you affirm that and know that everyone has gotten that email when you really meant to say, bitch. If you don't send this email to everyone when it's a department issue, and that's what you meant to say. That is what I say, so and then I wind up deleting the bitch. Shit around it, <laughs> and you still want to convey that anger, but you couldn't be angry. I so say you scroll use up all this other stuff, <laughs> and. In my experience as an educator, like autistic people, are like what the fuck is up with that? Like what no, the fuck like is why? Up with that? Why? Why? It's why? Weird. <laughs> why? That I don't. It's why weird. Do you do that? It's why? weird. It's weird. It's a it's assimilation. I promise. It's like it's like it, the type of colonialism is the answer. And as as simple as that answer is, it's still like why the fuck are we choosing it? And it's because it's it's this bull shit survival mechanism that like we are fucking like just wrapped up in that we have to fucking like reject because it's it's killing us and it's 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 continuing divisiveness it's creating ableism where it does not have to be where we have could have completely like it does not have to be it It does not have because again like like we like what like because like what are we good like what what are we saying like oh we're good like like what are we praising ourselves for you know what i'm saying as like holistic people oh like we're good at assimilating into the bullshit like okay. great. Let's ask this like elite. How? All right. We definitely so gonna. Be- <laughs> I hope. If, I hope y'all strap up. Right, let's 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 if y'all go could go, if y'all could go to, to, to the slides because there's some stuff there. I don't because it got we got 17 minutes. Oh, this is what I was about to say. I know. I know what I know. Like I was about to say, so let's get into like we've gone over time, but I do want to get into the second question before we transition into our next segment. So, um, and we've kind of just talked about this already, but I want to like dive deeper. Have you experienced racism and uh, and have and have racist experience impacted your diagnoses? Like, what is it out there? What is it like out there being like not only like we spoke about this a little, but um, a person of color, but like a person who's neurodivergent, and people generally don't get that. Cause and because and like how, like how, how, like how has that impacted like your life? Because, like I said, they thought that I had anger issues, mm-hmm. and that they they didn't die. They didn't look to to diagnose to diagnose to diagnose me with autism. Because because I'm black and they assumed that like, um, like that I was angry and now and now what happens is like when I'm like this because I'm because I'm I have sens- because I'm in sens- sensory overload right now they assume I'm on drugs and it's scary because there was this one time that I was I was at I was at a conference and they had and they had they had a fire, they had a fire drill and we all, and it was at NYU. And they, and then we all went outside and there's like, there's like 500 people in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the conference. And then however many fucking students there were in that building. And we were all out on the street and I, I lost my aid. Um, cause, cause I have to have an aid when I go places I don't know. And I passed by a cop and I just knew that motherfucker was going to kill me because because he was telling me to do something and and when i get when i get sensory overload to a point i don't understand i don't understand speech in the same way and i didn't know what he was saying and and i but i knew he was a cop and i was very i was very afraid and then something happened 
and something happened. And then I don't remember, but my hand was on my aide's shoulder and then I was in a library. Yeesh. Wow. Yeesh, 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 yeesh. That. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeesh. Yeah, like we've seen we've seen so many accounts. I'm grateful you you are here to share that story. We've seen so many accounts where people's neurodivergence had and, and coming up against the cops is just like n- not ending well. Black people's again. neurodivergence because it's when it's white people they they say it's a, it's an excuse for for them doing shit. Absolutely. Period. Period. Sophia, what like what has like been your experience like with that? Um, as far as well, like since, racism and neurodivergency. Since my son is young and he doesn't go anywhere, even if he was a bit older, I don't I don't think he would be at a point where he, he would be going independently yet. So for me, it's been more access to services and care. Um, I know that just the school system when you live in a certain school district and you only have, and you technically are, um, when you enroll your child, you're going to be typically um, assigned at first, you know, your zone school, they might be in special education or something like that to accommodate them. But typically the public school system, at least I can speak about in New York city, doesn't always have the ability to support your child. It's more on a school by school basis. And you will always find that, access to more services, the ability to have a para in the class with your child, um, even something like a, a gym in the in the school. At one point my son did go to at one point my son did go to a school that had a that had a therapy gym, but that that school was different. That's why he had access to a school with a therapy gym because of the location of that school. And so that's why for me, the IEP meeting, the IEP meetings was so important because I needed on paper. Yes, exactly. I needed on paper specifically what my child needs so that no matter what what school he goes to, he still has access to the same services and having a one on one. But I know for a fact that um, at one point my child was in a school where he was in a normal uh he sorry i don't mean i didn't mean to use that word but he he was in a public school with a special education population and they didn't have the proper staffing for him and that became a whole entire situation where i had to transfer schools and all of that stuff and and it's not easy to do those things but in my experience that's where racism definitely comes into play which is access to proper education and also because like te- teachers like at least here in arkansas like the longer you've been a teacher the more you get to choose what schools that you go to and so the teachers that are are paid more are in the white neighborhoods and because they're paid more and they have more ex- experience they tend they tend they are they have more p- patience and so like e- and so even then like even when you even when you have like all the all the everything on paper, the the you're you're with people who still tr- who tr- who treat you differently than if you were in an, another neighborhood. I, yes. I can't tell by your face. Does that make sense? Yes. No. You made perfect sense because uh, you're bringing up the pay disparity in communities and of you know um you know it um you know how people are brought up and that freaking affects everything like it's like uh, like we don't I, mention I how much like yes face mm, yeah oh <laughs> um, 
Arkansas is a whole nother like that's thing. another that, animal like, here and that. Yeah, it, it, it makes <laughs> sense. But like, no, Sophia, like, how do you feel about like what Jay's being saying? mad at me? It's no, no. No, I, what you said was perfect, and it, it makes complete sense. I know, and bring my experience as well. A lot of times, he's been with younger teachers who are a little less experienced. I mean, any if you're working in, I guess, special education, there are there's a certain amount of training that you have to go through. So that part I understand, but definitely the the more experienced teachers I haven't really come across. Um, the only reason why my child is not in private school is because I don't, I, I prefer him to be in neighborhood school because I have a lot of support from family and mm. it's just easier for me if he's in a neighborhood school. So that IEP got to be right. But the IEP got to be right. got to be right. And yeah. like, and re- like, which I'm going to cut you off. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just want to mention this in case there's anybody listening or watching that doesn't know this. That if the New York, if the New York City Department of Education is shown to not be providing proper, adequate services for your child, you can sue the city. And in order to, for them to pay for your child in a private school, because essentially that's New York, that's New York City saying we do not have the ability to accommodate your child. But by law, your child is, is required to have access to certain services. So if New York City cannot pay for it, they have to pay for somebody else to do it for you. Period, and and they'll do it, and they'll do it because. They'll do it because assimilating your child in any way, shape, or form into the into the zeitgeist, if you will, is important as fuck to them. So they will do it, okay? And at the end of the day, as a parent, it's got to also be important to you because you need your child to survive, right? So I, I, I want to ask this before we move on. I know we really got to move on. Um, but what, like, what does, and as, 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 as you know... Um, to as a as a neurodiverse crowd, I'm asking literally everybody in this in this motherfucker, including people watching, what does the future of education look like in general? Is it is it schools in that are accommodating neurodivergence, or is it literally us? Like like I you know was I just I'm gonna just say what I want. I wish and cannot wait until we actually get. To a place where we can educate our children ourselves and this will bridge gaps you know what i'm saying and create new freaking terminologies and new things that and new categories and 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 places and 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 expectancies and all kinds of things from each other that will be healthier you know because really like the whole it's the whole system is the fact that your child needs these particular services that will help them behave and do things in which will make them useful or you know productive and help them survive in this society that is just not built around something that should be okay you know what i'm saying something that shouldn't there that shouldn't then be like met with obstacles in the way that like colonialism has set up these particular obstacles okay so let me let me let, let me answer this first like as like an educator and there are, like there are like a couple of things that I did want to say like before like as someone like with a wealth of experience as like a paraprofessional and a teacher that has like advanced degrees and a lot of like certifications and specifications like my whole like thesis was around like autism because like I've just like like these students like resonated with me so much it made me like realize so much about myself and like how my own brain works or how like I thought my like my own brain worked until like I encountered other like other people who had like had like more similar brains to me than like um holistic people. Um but it how do I say this? I'm trying to like be PC and like not because this is Mark Zuckerberg, like Zuckerberg's internet <laughs> at the same time. Um, 
there's nothing wrong with you. Right. Like, if you're a person that's new, there's no, like, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong and I, I, with you. And not to interrupt, <laughs> my point is I think that this whole education system doesn't foster that reality. You know what I'm saying? Right. It doesn't, like, push the fact that there is nothing. It creates this narrative that there is something wrong. You know what I'm saying? That is... So to me, y'all know me. I'm a whole burn it the fuck down. I'm gonna I'm do away with it, kind of whole. Right. So I'm like, do away with it. Like at the core of it, yeah, the whole, the, the whole, the whole thing has to go because I feel that everyone can can be taught how they learn, and there's a person out there and people out there that can teach them how they learn and learn to the best of their own capability. Like I am like so against like like ABA and behavioral therapy yeah. and like all that fucking bullshit because it's fucking torture like it really what it is it's like it's it's fucking at like like academic torture is what like is what it's like is what it is but y'all, y'all are thinking y'all are thinking too too small the solution to to education for disabled and neural divergent people is there you go. There you go, Dario. Is to get rid of the fucking capitalism, where we are tied. That's what to I'm saying. Ability to produce, because that, because capitalism fuels ableism. Right. And and once you are, you are no longer valued by your ability to produce and make money for rich fucking white people then that is when they will care about disabled people and the way that that we learn Mm. I say and I I mean again that's that's essentially what I'm saying I'm like we got to get rid of the entire colonial beast because we need to not give a fuck about them caring at all who gives a fuck you know what I'm saying like do we care okay let's be a community that fucking cares you know what I'm saying? It's colonialism that doesn't allow, and the systems around it that doesn't allow those communities to build and thrive and therefore spread enough. Because then, of course, the spreading of that would be an infection to colonialism. You know what I'm saying? Like, colonialism would then, bo- then be infected by the right shit to motherfucking do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then it would have to fucking clearly die, whereas the infection would be the only thing that is. So it's not going to uh, allow it. So, like you said, we got to bring the whole please, bitch down. Can we please move to the next slide? Because I, I like to talk about autism and, and disability. Oh, yes, please. Okay, definitely. Like, And before we do that, well, the people out there want to know, Jay, what you, what, what, what you drinking? What you sipping on? I am drinking my martini. Um, Classy, and, and it is um, my martinis are two parts um, gin, two parts olive brine, one part vermouth, oh. and, three, and three blue cheese olives. Oh, I yeah, okay, that's fancy, Sha. That is fancy that, down. That that is real classy. So before, and it's heavy. Before we get into our next segment, we've. Like, what is the season finale? We we here to party. Okay. We have... Oh, like, I got to make us big for this because, like, we love y'all, but y'all don't matter right now. Oh, yeah. wait, no, Ooh, wait. So for you don't know that matter. Wait. Switch. <laughs> so we have an amazing event from... Produced from our love. The, <laughs> this beautiful motherfucker that I love has an amazing album called The New Kai Genesis. And we are bringing y'all a virtual concert event of that album, like, live on YouTube coming up in June. So right now, we're going to give y'all a special chance to view the trailer for the Anukai Genesis virtual concert. Make sure you cop copy y'all ticket. The link is in the description. So make sure you go to tinyurl.com slash Anukai concert. And you can get your tickets there if you're looking out there in podcast land. And, um, yeah. Like it's it's gonna be fun. We're gonna do so much fun. A meet and greet. Like we have like special packages. You get some like virtual album art. But check this out, and we're gonna be right back.
So make sure y'all cop y'all tickets right now, June nineteenth, Saturday, ten p.m. Eastern. I think that's eight p.m. Pacific. Um, it's gonna be a Saturday. whole virtual experience. You're gonna love it. So make sure you get that like right right now. Come through. <laughs> and if you're just like joining us right now, um. This is the A New Country. Um, tonight's topic is um, neurodivergence in communities of color. Um, we have some amazing guests sitting here with us right now. Make sure like you like this post. Love it. Loves go a lot farther. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure like you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know anytime we post a new video on our page. And share this no matter where you're watching or whatever you're doing. Like even if it's the podcast, share it. Share it down. Share it. Share it down. We're trying to get this out here share to it up. people. Um so let's get back into it, like with yes, our, guests our guests back. and our Look next. How beautiful season. they are! Oh my god! If y'all not watching it, y'all missing out. This is our season finale, y'all. So we going all out. Um. So our next topic. Oh, oh it's not working. We pee. That's. Oh, it's our next segment is the key. It's funny because it's true. Um. So tonight for the key. Um, we're going to watch a little video. We're going to, um, see some perspectives of women with autism, um, that are of color, some that are not, and, um, we're going to talk about that. Like, we're really going to get into, actually... Excuse the colonizers. And, <laughs> but before we get, actually get into that, so I wanted to, like, talk about this. I didn't get it. I'm doing, I'm doing another little, um, Mick Sykes TED Talk. Um, so what is autism? Like, autism, like has been a buzzword now for like maybe the last 15 to like 20 years like in academia and like common spaces and we know how we view neurodivergency in this country so i just wanted to like lay it out um another clinical term another clinical definition there are a lot of nuances to this so many so like this Already definition that i'm like about to give is not one that i like 100 percent unite with but this is like the most concise Concise. This is the most concise definition that I could find that like I unite with most parts of it. So, um, autism spectrum disorder, like ASD, is a developmental disability that can cause significant social, um, communication, and behavioral challenges. There is often nothing. Um, there is often nothing about how people with ASD look that sets them apart from other people, but people with ASD communicate, interact, and behave and learn in ways that are different from most people, um, from most other people. Um, learning, thinking, and problem-solving abilities of people with ASD can range from gifted to severely challenged. Ugh, I don't like the language. Um, so, some people with ASD need a lot of help in their daily life. Other, others need less. So, like, aut like, what does the autism spectrum look like for you people that are... I have a visual, but, but like, for the people that are um, listening to us out in podcast land, it's not a linear line. Like, it's really, um, a, like, um, a gradiated color wheel. Um, and it can go from anywhere from um, language to motor skills to perception to, like, executive function um, to sensory issues that, like, Jade was talking about earlier. Um, and it, it can be like a really uh, a broad range of things. Like the saying is, if you met one person with autism, 
you've only met one person with autism. So let's watch this video and um, we're going to talk about it. Here's the kind of an opportunity to smell ready for anything. Clay's got oh, the brain, there's the bra. Wow, an ad. I, I, I wow. pay us for that. When people think of a disease, they think of something that is degenerative and that will hurt you and kill you. Autism is not a disease. It is a developmental disability. It's about living our best possible lives with this condition. I don't know, I, you know, always get the you don't look autistic thing. Autism is like an internal thing, not an external thing. No one looks autistic. When people find that out, the first thing they're like, you don't act autistic. And I'm like, you know, I had to go through a lot of stuff to learn how to mask my idiosyncrasies. Autism isn't a linear spectrum of high or low. It's a whole bunch of different traits that are on their own spectrums. That's kind of a 3D weird mess. Autism is simply a, a different way of of thinking and seeing and, you know, and interacting with one's world. I view autism as realness. The words high functioning and low functioning are used by people, again, who are talking about autism from an outside point of view. So rather than using those labels, we tend to say minimal support needs and high support needs to describe the different kind of levels of the spectrum that people fall on. I definitely would disagree with the idea that we're not emotional. I think we're actually highly emotional. I think that we just Many times we don't express it the way that people expect. I like the comparison to Vulcans. In Star Trek, you know, lore, the Vulcans feel more strongly than humans. They just, like, don't show it. We're feeling it. It's there. It just might not come out. And then other times it might be overly expressed. I mean, sometimes, like, we'll cry. I mean, that might be it, like weird moments. I mean, well, you might think they're weird. I, I don't think they're weird. It can be so overwhelming, um, so um, intense that um, in order to function, you kind of have to sort of be still or shut down a bit. We can't filter them out because we feel them so strongly, so we shut down as a way of processing all those emotions. It takes a lot of effort to appear like the way I do right now. Like it takes a lot of like conscious awareness. Social skills are like a muscle for us. People will often say to me, oh, you're so high functioning. I would never know you had autism unless you said something. And I say, well, you don't live inside my skin and you don't know how hard it is for me sometimes just to get through a day. It's very, very draining. You know, even with people that I care for or enjoy being around, I have to psych myself up to be around them. All the little things that everyone does um, unconsciously, autistic people do manually, so that adds up. What I'm doing with every part of my body, I am to some degree aware of and trying to do. A lot of women, women that I know who are autistic, are not diagnosed until their 20s, 30s, or even beyond. A large part of this is because the way that we diagnose autism is by using criteria that were created observing boys. And autism looks different in girls and women than it does in boys. People don't expect to see someone that looks like me or my two youngest children who are on the spectrum also. We know that anyone can, you know, be on the spectrum. I didn't become aware of Asperger's until I was already an adult. At the time, finding a doctor was really difficult because there were people that were like, oh, women don't have that. And then there were other people that were like, well, you're too high functioning. I was in. Do you love mommy? Yeah. Love? Love. Strong? Strong. Intelligent? Intelligent. Okay, sorry, Dream. there's still. Dream. Beautiful. So I'm, I'm gonna Beautiful. stop that right now. My early 30s when I was. Oh, wait, oh, we still have more, more than a video to go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh, wait, uh. I messed it up. Give me one, one moment, Google. Spring <laughs> this is, so move up to the you know, it's 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 live, y'all. Like, yeah, shit, act, like, shit so happened. <laughs> shit really be happening, and there's nothing you could do. There's nothing you could do with it with technology. When people think um, of a disease, I, I remember the exact that moment that is though, degenerative so, you know, and that will hurt you and prepared. kill you. Autism is with here. Okay. And then. It's another commercial. Right, because you do way too much. No, I don't. Want to stop it. I don't because I. Because you do know. I, you won't say much. 
We're gonna edit this out so nobody <laughs> on the podcast saying will like Diagnosed ever myself. know this happened. Um, uh, after my children were, I don't think I would have been otherwise. Women are underdiagnosed, black women especially, and I think there's also this idea of, you know, the strong black woman, you kind of have to hold down the family and um, be able to um, just keep going and not address, you know, your, you know, whatever needs that you have, your support needs, not prioritize self-care. We just kind of slip through the cracks through the majority of our lives. I remember parent-teacher conferences of teachers telling my mom that I should be in special ed, I was an ideal homeschool candidate, there was something wrong with my brain. I remember that one, that was cool. You know, and now I feel a lot better. I feel like, okay, I know why I'm this way, I know why other people are the way they are, so I can bridge this gap. You invite a girl back to your apartment to watch a movie and she thinks you're just watching a movie. Netflix and chill doesn't literally mean Netflix and chill. That often does happen when you have someone who is inherently a little bit more naive because they're so literal. So when we think of people on the spectrum as not being interested in sex, not having any kind of sex drive or sexual interest, and it's just not true. We just may need more support in order to learn how to make that happen. We don't naturally understand the nuances that are involved in this, and there are a lot of nuances. There's a huge thing where people think that people on the spectrum, you know, that they all don't have relationships, and if they do, that it doesn't even reach a sexual point. Having or not having those things does not determine whether one is on the spectrum or not. Some of the ways that I show love that he might have thought were odd, um, he now um, understands that it's just my, you know, my love language, my way of communicating, and, and in a sense, he kind of serves as my interpreter <laughs> to the neurotypical world. Often autistic People don't get taught sex ed at all, let alone like how to protect themselves in like the real world from like date rape. These are topics that often aren't taught to autistic teenagers because adults like don't want to deal with it. If people on the autism spectrum, especially women, are more likely to experience sexual assault um, or some sort of a violent incident than the neurotypical. Uh, non-autistic population. Uh, we are we are very vulnerable. We definitely can be more trusting because we are very honest and upfront people. So we don't think that other people might not be so honest and might, you know, be trying to hurt us. One of the traits of autism is not reading between the lines in social interactions and so much of Okay, so that was a lot to unpack. Um but we like here at the key segment, we want you guys, you y'all guys, look at me, y'all's comments out there, like Niggas. in Facebook land, YouTube land, like hit us up in the comments. Let y'all know what like y'all take from this video, like love what y'all feeling, what y'all receive, and like we're gonna talk to our guests right now. So like what like what do y'all want to hit on um, from what we just saw? So uh, firstly, I I. And part of my uh, talking about my latency and my um, my getting diagnosis, I should I should have clarified that I'm AFAB, and so I was socialized as a woman, and okay. um, and then that also um, impacted my ability to be um, diagnosed. Can you but, explain really quickly? I I yeah. don't want to derail you what AFAB is for the people out there. And thank you for oh, sharing because yes. you did it's not a, have to at all. You did not. But I know. thank you. Um, but it's it's very, I, I normally don't, but it's very relevant to this topic. So AFAB is a signed female at birth. And so it means that when I was born, the doctor went, this is a girl. And then I was raised as a girl until I determined otherwise. Mm. And so, um, and so autism looks very, very different in and um, in this video, they were saying women, um, because right. this is a video by cishet folk, well, cisgender women more than likely. Um, but what they mean is um, people who are assigned uh, female at birth, uh, because people who were assigned female at birth are socialized as women um, in their childhood. And so uh, most of the time. And so, uh, yes, I relate to so much of what they were saying because yes, um, it is autism does look different in people who are assigned female at birth, people who are socialized as women, than it does as people who are socialized as men, because we have to mask more. 
um, because um, I'm reading what uh, Gypsy is saying here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't Thank mean you to throw so you off. But, um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so like, and so um, as a society, right? We we teach young people that we perceive as girls um, that they that we have to behave behave a certain way, right? We're taught that you're supposed to be nicer, quieter, um, mm. things like this. And so, a lot of those things. Um, impact the way that we mask and um because of that um and, oh can you okay. explain what masking is if, if you yes let me talk about what masking like actually is. yes and so earlier i talked about uh so i've had a couple of uh, martinis i'm a little less overstimulated uh why so i can communicate better but um so earlier i talked about co-switching as like a black person right co-switching is when you are around a white a white person you're in a room full of white people you have to talk like a white person does right mm -hmm. uh you know so like you know sentences like hey yo fam you good turns into oh my gosh sally are you okay you know stuff like that um and so for me as a black autistic person uh masking feels very much the same way masking for me is me remembering one every single time that someone has told me that i'm weird and remembering that moment that i went home and i thought about and i thought about every interaction of that time remembering every single one of those moments and also remembering every single moment of a time that a, an holistic has behaved in a way that i didn't necessarily expect and analyzing why that holistic behaved in that way mm. and, take, so and taking all of these time these two um all of these times together and constantly trying to change my behavior to mirror holistics right so like um an example would be um, if I am. Oh, I'm bad at this. Y'all, give me a give me a random task uh, that you would be doing in front of other people. Going to the grocery store. Okay, so if I'm going to the grocery store, I, I'm I get out the car, and I shut the door, and when I shut the door, I think, okay, I have to lean my body over this way and move my hand this way because I saw someone else do that. Um, and it was like a blue car. I don't remember who it was. And then I, if I'm with someone, then um, once I get to them, I remember, okay, every time that you see a person um, and like your back's faced and then you're, you're like your back's faced and then you face each other, you say something. And so then I think of something to say um, and probably what I would say is something related to what we said in the car, because people typically, when they see each other, um, whenever they are, they there hasn't been a break in their interaction, they think they continue the conversations. And so, um, and so I would say like something related to the song that was in the car, and then that person would turn around, which would tell me that. I no longer have to continue the conversation about the song that's in the car. We would walk into the store and um, they would say something about, you know, the air that, you know, that blew in whenever we came in. And I remember like every time that somebody talks about the air, whenever you walk into a store, you're supposed to talk about flies. And so I tell them that, you know, that's <laughs> meant to like get rid of flies. But it's like, so like whenever um, the woman was, whenever the woman was talking about like how everything that holistics do automatic we do on manual. Oh my fucking god! I'm like, sitting here so crying for you. I'm like wow, like the fact that your brain has detailed all that shit, and I was like wow, you never think about that. I was like damn. <laughs> Like yeah, I can relate to how, I can, right. that I like 
Thank you for that. It's so valuable to know that. Like, yeah, like uh, I can relate to I can relate to like the, that level of hyper vigilance in a different way, but like that, yeah. Fuck society, yo. A mother of a child who is autistic. Um, a lot of times I spend I spend a lot of my time kind of being that barrier, or not even a barrier, kind of like the conduit between him and the world, and. I did, you made me tear up a little bit when you spoke, when you mentioned, you know, that in order for you to be able to function in a way that the larger society seems as acceptable, you have to almost program yourself based on negative experiences that you had. Those negative experiences that you had are what taught you how to now you're not gonna make me cry you're not gonna make me cry tonight like it hurt it it just made me so sad and i will say that one of the reasons i jumped on getting my child assessed very early it wasn't because i was trying to find out what's wrong with my child i wasn't trying to find out what's wrong i wanted to get him support to be able to live his life in the best way that he can based on his individual brain, his individual physical ability, not fixing. And I think that's another thing that's very important. We haven't touched on it yet, but I think this yes. focus you, on- You don't need to fix them. They, they do not need fix. fixing. There's nothing to fix. What we need to do is support the way that they think, support the way that they interact with people, and the society at large needs to be more needs to be have more space to integrate people with neurodivergency it's not their responsibility to make us comfortable the world's responsibility is to meet every single individual person where they're at human beings come in a variety of different colors sizes physical abilities and the world at large is what's supposed to be supporting these people not finding ways to fix them so that's one of the reasons why i got emotional when you were speaking initially is because it just triggered something in me that i experienced a lot i was aware um you know you you find that it's these negative experiences that kind of create the notches in brain of what to do next time. Mm. I'll tell you. Mm. And and to to piggyback and f- f- like backtrack and deepen no we don't say piggyback divert. around here. We, we you know, deepen. To leapfrog nah. <laughs> um so what so it's support until we can bring all of the motherfucking systems that make support necessary down. You know what I'm saying? It's inclusion until like we can bring all of those systems that make it have to be like, oh yeah, sure, like yeah, come here down, right? Because at the end of the day, even those things, like I don't know if, it, if anyone has heard, but I've said it before in the podcast, like tolerance is arrogant. Mm-hmm. Like... To me, like, tolerance is, like, the, the height of arrogance. It's like, okay, like, sure, like, you're doing all of that fuck shit, but right. it's fine. I I, I still deem you a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's acceptance or oh, nothing. I, it's understanding I, I, that reality is reality or it's nothing. It's reality. It's reality. It's reality. You know? So, to piggyback, to, to connect what you were saying, so, um, Safiya, sorry to interrupt you again, but to, to um, connect what you were saying to what um, um, Black Sis was saying in the video... She was like, I define autism as real. I was like, yes, bitch, because yes, son. I refuse and to my, participate and, and in the lie y'all niggas because, are living. Because, I don't know what this is. Because just like Jane had connected <laughs> masking to code switching, there's all, like, literally every colonized person should be able to relate to the shit. So if we, like, like when, when we're talking about any kind of, like, other kind of, like, sub-othering 
you know, marginalized, you know, person within the colonized community. It's like colonized people should be able to get it for those connected things that all of the things that connect us is, and the whole reason that we are fucked up in what it is that we're doing is because of colonialism, right? So if we can just fucking like unite on that and stop fucking trying to argue anything else, we we will join all this, our autistic brothers and sisters in the realness. The because realness. these fake ass niggas <laughs> wait, are no, so wait. like tied to this fake shit <laughs> that you that you that you have this like again this fake elitism that doesn't see like the reality in that you perform bullshit. Every day, every day, every day, and e- every and you day. doing and you doing it on automatic doesn't make you better than nobody, and you doing it on automatic is actually kind of scary. Hold on, hold on, okay. <laughs> right? Like, is it not like kind of scary that like automatically like you're okay with having Jack. bullshit conversations? Like, it's a little scary that you're Jack. cool with that on the oh. inside of yourself. <laughs> so, wow. Wow. What? I, I, wow. No. Thank you for breaking it down. I'm sorry. Yeah, Am I saying Cecilia, like, Cecilia, Cecilia is out here asking, and this is to all of us, um, is tolerance code switching? Like, I, would what say, is I would say code switching is tolerance of the colonial issue. Woo! Okay. Does that make us ain't shit? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the fact that we will force any kind of code switching such as masking or anything passing in the trans community anything on our on our, on our colonized brothers and sisters is maddening and that's why Jade whenever you see me going off it's why that's what I'm so mad at is like, that we would even fucking do this shit white and perpetuate the shits sorry but, go ahead hold on, hold on hold on hold on like we gotta talk about if, if we if we're gonna talk about code switching and masking and passing, we gotta talk about how for a lot of us, that shit is life or death, right? It's true. Like, like you can't, like you can't, like you can't, like talk shit about somebody because they want to code switch or they want to pass or they want to mask because, like, that's sh- that shit is life or death. All right. right. Sure. No, yes. It's it, not talking shit about them. It's talking shit about the circumstances that require right, it. To do it's that. talking about the life and death circumstances in which that require it. And it's it's in saying that for the people that it's not life or death for for us like if it, like I it hasn't been life or death for me in a, in 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 many circumstances in my life. I am blessed by Egun for that to be Egun being ancestor, the ancestors for that to be the case in my life literally just people think oh because we're in the northeast that that's the case nope there's people literally right down the block that that's not the case for okay so period right at the end of the day at work I literally make it a point to not code switch because I have that privilege and that and at, at, at the end of the day if you notice that you have that privilege to literally be like if this is not a life or death situation then take it upon yourself to create an environment that allows your motherfucking colonizedness that allows your blackness you know what I'm saying because we can't expect that of anybody else if we're not going to do it as holistic people in spaces where we have privilege period like if, if we can't if we can't we have to create the spaces where these other situations start to get to a place where we are not considering them diff- like considering them like in need of fixing because mm. if you don't cons- if you don't take the opportunity when you have privilege to to say that you as a colonized person are not in need of fixing by saying you don't need to speak any differently than you would speak to your mother to your mother mm. I don't owe you more than I owe my fucking mother okay and that's all I gotta say about this that. is the key let's get let's get to a couple of these comments <laughs> I like I feel what you're saying so gypsy says because the way like and they correct this and stuff Jade broke it down it sounds like straight people um straight up no sugar coating and uh being that white people constructed society they're passive aggressive it doesn't match yes it's a lie like white people are super violent super violent so all of this like polite speech and like social discourse around like what's like what's elegant and what's not it's bullshit because y'all literally murdered raped pillaged and stole everything that y'all have 
So, like, yes, it does not mesh. It does not. And you don't have to not interrupt. Go. It don't make sense. And this is... Go ahead. I'm trying to interrupt. All right. So, I do want to clarify that for me, my autism um, and for people that I interact with, which who tend to be on the same... um, Who tend to be in similar areas of the spectrum, um, it comes off as realness, right? Um, But... Keeping in mind that autism is a spectrum, um, that, and uh, so, and we talked about how uh, part of it is communication and part of it's sensory. Some of it is uh, motor skills and things like that. Uh, that my experience with autism and um, having difficulty with uh, communicating in a in an holistic world may not mirror someone else's uh, uh, difficulty in, in um, navigating an holistic world, be it sensory wise or I'm, um, uh, Sophia, um, I'd like you to speak on maybe some of the ways that you've noticed your, uh, your child, um, you know, having difficulties navigating an holistic world that may not necessarily mirror uh, communication being that he's nonverbal. I have to unmute myself. Um, The first, the most prominent area I normally see it is when he wants to interact with other children. We'll do things like go to the park. And because he's nonverbal and also there's the social, there's the social interaction aspect of it. The way he socializes is a lot different from the way other children his age socialized. So if he sees a kid that he wants to play with, he has, one, he has no way to ask them that they would understand. If you are around him a lot, his friends and family understand the way he is. But other children who don't interact with him on a regular basis, like if we go to the park and he sees some kids that he wants to play with, he has no way to tell them that he play. And the children haven't been socialized to um, interact with children who are neuro who are, are neurodivergent. So it, it he's always boxed out of interacting with other children his age that he doesn't know. So if he goes to a birthday party or something like that, these kids with a toy, his first instinct if he wants a toy, he's gonna grab the toy. He's gonna just take it from the other child. Then you know I have to step in and either and usually give it back to the kid because. What am I gonna do? Um, but then other times you'll see where he sees, I've seen him see a group of children that I could tell he really wants to play with and he stands back and it, and um, I know it's because there's been times where he tried to interact with kids and it didn't, didn't have a positive response. So he's learned that if he sees children that he doesn't know to kind of hand back, hang back and then if they approach him, then he'll interact with them. Um, he, he also doesn't really have any stranger danger, so he'll, he will walk up to people that he wants to interact with and he'll just reach out and touch them. He'll pull someone's hair and obviously, you know, it's uh, for him, it's like, oh, hair, oh, oh, you know? But this is a lady on the train. She doesn't. Know, she doesn't know you. You don't know her. And um, for him, he's just reaching for this sensory stimulation. He's not thinking about the fact that this hair is attached to a person. So he'll pull, or or he um, or he'll see someone might have something that he wants, like they're eating something, and he's like, "Oh, that looks like a good donut." And I'm like, boy, (laughs) you can't be taking donuts from the lady walking down the block. You can't do that. (laughs) So that happens a lot. Um, And then, you know, but we we teach him. We do have little uh, things that we do to kind of remind him to like reset him. So if we're walking down the street and I I can I, I can anticipate him a lot. So if we're walking down the street and I see I'm like, oh, that girl got long hair down her back. He gonna want to try to get that. 
So I'll just gently take him by the shoulder and that reminds him not to reach out and try to touch that person. So we do we do things like that when we're in public or, um, and I tend to, honestly, I like to frequent the same places all the time. There's a few times where I go that I know the staff is gonna be very, it, it, the, the staff is gonna let him do his, and they're not gonna look in his direction when he's pushing the chair. That I even have a restaurant where they know exactly where to seat me when they see me. When they see me, there's this huge, heavy wooden table that he can't shake. And they see me, they just take me straight. Well, he can't shake that table if he, and it's in the corner. So when he's stimming, when he's doing verbal stims, he's not really within earshot. You hear me? Can you, yeah. Can we explain what a stim is? Maybe you might be better at explaining what a stim is. I I can kind of touch on it and then maybe you can allow it. Um, a stim is a type of sensory expression, physical, physical output of sensory expression that a lot of people with autism have. So it could be verbal. Um, and I, I want to differentiate between a stim and a child who's nonverbal, who is communicating, but because they don't use words, we may not understand what they're saying. Because a stim and a nonverbal or minimally verbal person expressing themselves vocally are two different things. A stim is kind of like a out is, is essentially like a a a. a uncontrollable output. It might be verbal, it might be physical, where the person might have something they do with their hands on a regular basis that's not necessarily controllable, but it's a it's a type of stimulant that feels good to the person who's doing it. And it could be I triggered do, by different things. I do want to clarify that stims can be intentional. Um, mm -hmm. Like if I know that I'm overstimulated, I like, this is, this is my hand stim. Kind of calm yourself down in a way, or like remind mm -hmm. yourself where you are, right? Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So like, um, this is like my hand stem, and like I know, like if I'm getting overstimulated, I can do this before, like in early stages of overstimulation, or what um, is what I refer to as since uh, what I refer to when I talk about sensory overload. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, you made a really good point um, in saying that. Uh, I'm gonna remember what it was here in a second. I'm not gonna forget. Um, oh, and talking about vocal stems and um, nonverbal communication, uh, mm -hmm. because um, when I reach a certain level of overstimulation, um, I do become nonverbal. My vocal stem is like e, and for me, it like it vibrates my jaw and my ears in a way that that mask other sounds to where I can't hear it. And so it's calming for me in that respect. I can't mimic what I sound like when I'm nonverbal because by then I don't have um, enough com cognitive function, but it's like, it's, it's kind of like I'm trying to make what I think words sound like, but my mouth doesn't do the right things. So it, it would probably, and this probably isn't what it sounds like, but I would probably sound like I yow, I yow, or something like that. Like, you know, because that, that sounds like me trying to say like I want to go. Um, in my in my mouth, it feels like that, but it just doesn't come out that way. And so, like stem, like vocal stems are repetitive. They're the same sound over and over again. A person may have, you know, one, two or three of them and they're comforting. Whereas um, a non like a person trying to communicate when they're nonverbal or a nonverbal person trying to communicate. It's frustrating. It is incredibly frustrating when you have a thought. And you cannot relay that thought to the person in front of you, you know. I mean, I know with, <laughs> I was going to say like with my, with my son, you can, 
you can always tell when he's actually communicating. He may not even be communicating with me. He could he, sometimes he's communicating to himself or he's stimulating himself in some way uh, vocally. But it is different from a stem. And I think from the outside, though, I don't necessarily know if a holistic but this is that's my first time hearing that word. So I learned something tonight. But I don't know if an holistic person would recognize the difference. How do you recognize the difference? Um, I recognize the difference because when he's communicating, there's recognizable sounds that he makes. And um you can you can recognize what situations he'll make certain sounds so if he if something tastes real good he'll he'll make a sound or if he wants something there's specific vocalizations that he makes when he wants something versus when he's unhappy about something versus trying to get your attention whenever he's trying to get my attention the vocalization is the same so he's talking to me he's saying mommy i need you when he's stimming, a lot of times it, it, it's um, after being stimulated. And I did say, I think, uncontrollable earlier. And that wasn't necessarily the word I meant to use um, because uncontrollable implies that they're not doing it on purpose or they can't help themselves. I, more or less what it is is that, um, I, I don't know exactly how to put it in words, but the stems kind of they they come from a place where it's like he needs he needs to do this right now that's what i mean by uncontrollable it's like right now i need to do this i need to i need to center my body so sometimes he just needs to center his body so he'll swing his arms back and forth back and forth and what that is is him physically reminding himself where he is what what he's doing and then he'll come back but in that moment he needs to swing his arms that's the stem or um, if he gets so excited, so happy, he just says, I think it's, it's like, that's more or less like he's so excited. The adrenaline is rushing so fast. Like, you know, you if you like pick him up and spin him around and spin him around, it's like he was, you spun him around and he feels so good. It's like, I'm flying. And how can I, how, how do I manifest that feeling that I'm flying? I'm just going to scream it out. So he's, and then you'll see like the uh, you'll see the calm down after that like the adrenaline starts to like just calm down and you'll see and even the stem starts to sound different you know but it's almost like he makes these vocalizations because he's so internally he feels so good there's so much happening inside that it's just like burst out of him out of his mouth so I think that's like how I tell the difference <laughs> I will say, I love it. Like, I like I, I like I completely like feel everything you're saying. Like experiencing that, like as like a parent and someone from the outside. But I also will say, as like um, an autistic person, like how many times have you wanted to scream and it wasn't <laughs> socially acceptable? Ah. Like how many oh times have you wanted to cry out? And like you knew that you could not, like you felt it in your body. I think of the literal. I think of the literal like, stuff I'd be doing in here sometimes. You were, like we're gonna talk about, like they would have thought that you were crazy, yeah. so you stopped yourself. How many times have you been so happy? You wanted to just right. like yell and scream, and like you right. knew that you could not. When's the last time? <laughs> when's the last holistic people? When's the last time you allowed yourself to even feel that happy? <laughs> And there's so many times where people ask me, That's you know, a self -read. Well, you handle this so well. And I'm like, I don't want to say like there's nothing to handle well, but I'm like, listen, if you know your child, then you, if you actually take the time to understand your child on an individual basis and kind of separate yourself and your expectations and all that stuff and see your child on an individual on an individual level and validate their experience it'll make the care of a child so fulfilling and i'm my friends are stuff that i know in other circumstances might frustrate a parent right 
But I'll say, but I'll say to myself, like, I'm getting him ready for school. And another child might be able to say to me, Mommy, I'm still sleepy, I'm tired, I don't want to get up yet. But he can't tell me I'm not ready to wake up. We, we, I have an alarm. I have to set my alarm at five minute intervals. Because if I need to get out of my bed at 7 30, I gotta start waking <laughs> up. So he can't mean, Mommy, I need 20 minutes to like actually wake up. So he'll stiffen his body. Mm. And the other spirit, do, and my I might. Like, even if you want to get, I mean, it gets the point across. <laughs> this is him communicating to me. I need a second. And as an holistic person, you just look at this, and he's not moving. And you just, it's like you're like, come on, it's time to get ready for school. It's time to get ready for school. It's time to get ready for school. But his experience is, listen, I fell asleep late last night. You're waking me up. I'm not ready. The sun is in my eyes. I, I need a second. I have to acknowledge that that's his experience in that moment. I, I really want to say, Sophia, that I appreciate you. Because honestly, when I think about parents of autistics, um, I, I have a, a bit of a, uh, I don't know what this feeling is, but it's like a, uh, you know, like that feeling, because a lot of times, like you'll see parents turn their kids into like a a thing to give themselves an identity, and their kid just becomes a uh, not commodity, but I don't I don't know the word, but like something that's not a person, and um, the fact that like you as an <laughs> I'm sorry, say again. My parents are like that with their kids, period. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but the fact <laughs> that you, as an holistic person, like, you know what um, your child is saying, um, even when he's nonverbal, it, it just speaks volumes about you as a parent. And I really do appreciate that uh, because. I, I I mean, I do see it. I see it. I don't know what this says, but I see it uh, majorly. I see it most of the time in 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 black parents and black and black women parents. Um, but you just see so much of holistic parents over talking and overshadowing and use their and using their their um, autistic children as a means to get attention. And I really appreciate you because I don't feel that that's you. An accessory, yes, Christopher. Thank you. I, I really appreciate your, <laughs> your kind words, honestly. I really appreciate it. I feel like as a parent, it's very important to um, recognize that your child is their own person living their own life having their own experiences and my life and what i want and what i need in that moment does not necessarily take precedence or priority all the time and especially when you have a child who has any type of special needs neurodivergency anything i mean not even just that some kids just they need help with school. Some kids really, really need help with school. And you as a parent can't get mad at your kid or try to like change them. Your job as a parent is to support them. And, you know, just have them thrive to the best of their abilities as an individual. And so for me, that's my that's my priority is allowing my child to thrive to the best of his ability and I did make sure that I, I feel like I, I try to look at the world from his eyes there's times I think at his height to see what he sees and how he sees it sometimes he vocalizes in a certain way and I just vo do the vocalizations back to kind of feel the physical feeling in my body of what he's feeling when he's making these vocalizations that's gonna help me understand him more 
Um, and so, like, there's there's a term that you, you can use. You are such wait, a wait, good wait. mom girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love her. I love her. I love her. Um, and there's a term that you there's a term that you've been using, but I didn't feel comfortable like I'm talking to you about it before then because, like, I I really do have a thing with holistic parents uh, of autistic children. Mm-hmm. Um, but like mm-hmm. when we talk about special needs, we all have mm-hmm. special needs. Um, like you have special needs that are different from other people. I have special needs that are different from other people. Literally. Like, right. Um, and so like uh, what a lot of autistic and, and disabled people I want to see a push toward is like more support. Like so mm-hmm. a person that needs more support versus special needs um, because um, when, because how can I verbalize it? Um, When we talk, when we say like more support, one, it isn't, I mean, when we say special needs, one, it isn't necessarily as true as we can be. So it doesn't, it doesn't, accurately display what the what the person's needs are mm-hmm. and then additionally when we say special needs um it 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 takes away part of the autonomy autonomy of the disabled person right um because when you say like special needs it means that this person has needs that they can't fulfill themselves. So therefore, I as a abled person or holistic person need to fill those needs mm-hmm. and it takes away that person's autonomy. Whereas if you say more support, um, mm-hmm. like a person needing more support, it's, it says like this person has a certain level of ability and this person has a certain level of meeting their own needs. So like with your son, he has, he, like people think that nonverbal people means, means that they don't communicate. As you have clearly stated, he communicates, but he needs more support in, in, um, in people understanding the way that he communicates. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. And thank you. Thank you for informing me. I appreciate it. I actually, it's funny because I think inherently I always, I never necessarily liked the phrase special needs. I just didn't have anything to replace it with. So I appreciate you letting me know that and I will adjust my language for sure. (laughs) Y'all This means thank you for people who uh, don't know any ASL. It means thank you and you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Y'all have been so amazing. This I, has like... been, yeah, like, <laughs> we, like, this is gonna, we're gonna be, like, weeping after this. No, for real. Like, um, y'all have to stay on the line with us after this, because I need to cry. Yeah, we need to <laughs> cry like, shot, right quick, right fast. Like, no, this is so... It's been oh. real. And I thank you so much, again, both of y'all for the education, um for what it is that y'all know that y'all both need support with and for all of the language support y'all know how important language is for me i'm like if we don't get the fucking language right then like how we get any of this shit's right because right. especially in this english shit if it's not right it's a lie <laughs> literally with english so um thank you so much for everything the people are really responding well. The people are really understanding. You guys are extremely clear. So if anybody was, you know, concerned about whether or not they were getting their shit off correct, everybody, we understand what you're saying. And it's, it's coming off and we feel you. And at the end of the day, I feel like one of the, you know, besides the main message of, like, we've got to just, like, make sure the support is there and get the resources where they need to go, the understanding that, like, you know, we didn't necessarily get as deep as I... um as I think you might have wanted to Jade into like necessarily how much um, resources are not necessarily available for adults of color that get diagnosed in um, adulthood. Um, But at the end of the day that there, it was mentioned. At the end of the day, I can tell you that um, the majority of uh, therapists and psychologists, psychiatrists 
are not willing to uh, to diagnose adults uh, as autistic. And there are very, very few that will um, diagnose adults as autistic. Additionally, um, previously there was a, um, and I think you talked about this, Sophia, there was a, um, a diagnosis called Asperger's that we no longer use anymore. Asperger's one was used to define people who um, were latent in their ability to communicate. So like uh, they started communicating after a certain age. I don't, uh, verbally, I don't know what that was. Um, additionally, Asperger's, Hans Asperger was literally a Nazi scientist that uh, ch that killed children. And so we don't want to memorialize his name in any way. Uh, <laughs> Yo. It just, they throw the colonial shit inside of the shit and then make you regurgitate the shit. So we made, uh, we giving people diagnoses named after fucking Nazis? And, yes! And I'm all yes! up and yes! through America. Yes! Yes! Like, yes. Nazism all up and through here. This is why, like, I be trying to tell people it's the whole thing. It's got to come down. Because I feel like besides the support, the one thing that I feel like we need to, that we've understood, at least me as a person, like, me sitting here as a revolutionary, as an anti-colonialist, is that, like, literally we would just all be better off without the fake shit. That literally, if there's an autistic person with a for that that is that is dealing that is you know going as far as like say having the kind of thing where they need a diaper, we come from people who shat where we felt, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's where we came from. Like it's the fact that child niggas like toilets. That's the problem. Not you know what I'm saying? Like really, like really. So like in, in my opinion, so. You know, get I don't want to out of the colonial shit. But the people want to bless y'all cash apps out there. Yes. So if y'all can, like, put your cash app in the in comments, the comments, and I'll highlight it. Um, message it, message, like, message it to us like, on Streamyard, and we'll put like, it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> gonna, so give me one second because I gave that boy my phone. I don't know my cash app. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he up there on the cash app, like, yeah, request. Jane, yeah, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go get my cash app. Cancel. Yes. <laughs> let's, let's take another trailer moment while we while we get these cash apps together. So okay. for anybody who so hasn't seen the trailer. If you like if you're just joining us, um, make sure make sure you like this post. Loves get a lot farther, so make sure you love it. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and you hit that notification bell so you know anytime we post a new video on this channel. Make sure you share this so everybody out there gets that beautiful like information and like from like the people who actually experience it. Like we're not about that bullshit on the new Kai Tree. So we hope y'all know that. And we're coming to you. We're gonna take another commercial break real quick. While y'all y'all bless those cash apps, while we get those cash apps together, um, and we put together a wonderful virtual concert experience, Jip Jack, um, the album Anuka Genesis. Um, we're gonna play the trailer. Um, I hope y'all enjoy it and make sure you purchase those ticket those tickets on tinyurl.com slash Anuka Concert. Um, it's a, it's an event, right? So um, check that out, and we are gonna be right. Back. Asked him if he for 20, he said this is pussy wet. Asked him from the Caribbean, so I said, let me check. I whip you off the map with that flat little flap. Is you gon' cap? Or be like, fuck you, fat. No, go home, I don't, no hoes, so roast to condone, no don't, show me nigga, I will gag, your homie show, they loyalties is gone, your bros, but only cause no life's loving your child.
Unprepared. Um, but this is li- like li- it's live, y'all. Like what? Like what can we do? It's live. Um, drinking. It's late. Jay is away. Um, we're gonna give us a second because like we haven't like a, like a little audio snafu. I'm trying to fix this. Oh no. Oh, we may have to just like take our chances with the unmuted. <sighs> Oh wait, no, because the the mic exactly. Can. Uh, <sighs> well, I don't hear y'all, so I'm just gonna have to be sitting here listening, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. I don't know. That's my. You don't want to hear me. <laughs> anyway. Or should I just I, get my head? I got an annoying, annoying voice. No, that's gonna mess up my. Oh wait, dude. hold on. Give us, give us one second. This is, <laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. Hold on. <laughs> it's gonna put my actual earphones on. Mess up my whole dude. Took too long to do something this simple. <laughs> y'all. Talk, talk amongst yourselves. Okay. We'll talk amongst ourselves if y'all can well, pick yourself we up. Try to this. Oh, y'all can hear us. We can't hear you. At yeah. The okay, so I'm going to turn off the phantom power. Y'all will not hear us for a second. Okay. Thank you. And- okay. So, Sophia, how's your day been? Yes. <laughs> wait, I didn't. Wait, what did you say? Sorry. You said I said how your day been. And then you said look up your cash app. That's what you said on the chat here. Oh see. yeah, one of y'all gotta look it up because I can't find my phone. And yeah, I can't find my phone. The child done lost it. <laughs> And it's on silent because I was trying to be polite, you know. I didn't want my phone ringing during the um <laughs> while we were recording, so my phone's on silent. So I don't even know. I don't know my cash app. Girl, I don't know how to find anything on here. Let me see. Here. All right, so we're back. Yeah, 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 I can hear. Oh wait, you. oh Jay, you didn't send us your cash app. My cash app, I put it on there. It's dollar sign. Oh, you put it in the comments? Wait, yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay, good. Go. Yes, boom. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. fucking terrible. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so if y'all want to bless that cash app, like, yeah, go ahead and bless do that. It. All right, so let's get into our last segment for tonight. And that is... Why is it not working? Wow. You know? Mm-hmm. Keeping it real, all facts, no printers. So, our keeping it real topic for tonight is let's talk about ableism and how um, we can be more inclusive in our language, our behavior, and our relationships. Like, there are a lot of like common things that we say, in, like our everyday speech, that are like a- like ableist language, um, like confronting that like type of like thing that like at work or like even in social places so like how do we like start to address that oh, oh. <laughs> uh. um I, I'll, I'll let Jay speak first I feel like it's just so my time is still little so I feel like I, there's certain things I haven't encountered yet so I definitely want to hear from you because you have a lifetime of experiences. Yeah, and so um, I think 
I think the two most um, undervalued people in you know in our society are black people and disabled people and I think you I think you see a lot of like racism and ableism in our language so like when we say things like that's so lame what is lame tell me what is lame what what does the word lame mean that's that's not a rhetorical question one of y'all answer what does the word um, lame mean like can't walk right and right and walking. so when you say that's so lame and you use the word lame in a negative connotation what are you saying to people who cannot walk right that they're so right say, that they're wrong right so we say things like that's so lame and that's crazy we say things like i was bipolar that day or <laughs> I, <laughs> I, <laughs> sorry let no, me right. tell you you are not bipolar for one motherfucking day. You are not bipolar for one motherfucking situation. People with bipolar um, disorder, people who are bipolar, however that person wants to identify, they have an experience that is much different than yours. And just because in that moment, you felt like your emotion changed in a drastic way, does not equate in the slightest bit to the experience that they have. Thank you so much, Mandy. Does not experience to the, the does not equate to the experience that they have. People who want to say I'm antisocial because they don't hang out with people. Do y'all know that's a literal disorder? That is literally, and it has nothing to do with the amount of time that you spend <laughs> with people. Y'all quit saying that shit. It irritates me so fucking much when people say I'm antisocial. And it means they don't hang out with people. Just say you're not social. Right. It saved you a whole syllable. Maybe that'll be your last Thank breath you, or something. Thank you, time. Fucking know. Give you me know? It. Um, But, Thanks. of course, like, unlearning the language that we have with ableism starts first with being very conscious of what you're saying, especially when it comes to, like, phrases that we use on a regular basis. And then also un undoing like what you think about disabled people. Um, I want to clarify, right? What disability is because a lot of us don't understand that, right? We 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 really don't know what disability is, right? What makes a difference between a medical condition and a disability? Do any of y'all know that? I don't. Okay, so the difference is a disability is a medical condition that impairs one of your major life functions. It impairs your ability to navigate society, right, in, in some way. And so because of that, like disability actually stems from society. Like right. my... My autism would not be a disability if y'all would just fucking communicate and say shit the fucking way that you need. <laughs> Get really rid of the, these goddamn Facts. fluorescent fucking lights. Who invented fluorescent lights? I want to fucking choke them with my bare hands. Like, stop <sighs> they, they literally are ugly. Blind. They rob you of all your skin's nutrients. It's awful. What us? Who? Like what in the white torture? Like anywhere? Sorry. And they buzz all the motherfucking time. Uh, I don't know if you're like it, but they and like I can't. And like the can't. worst kind of like not actually B flat. Like it's awful. It's horrible. It's horrible. And so like if we lived in a society that accommodated autistic people that accommodated people who use accessibility devices and don't accommodate them in the bare motherfucking minimum way that you mm. can fucking put a ramp up and consider like oh this is an accommod like a, 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 a oh. Sophia how's it coming from the how's it coming from the outside um, one second I want to talk about this yeah, like, I, if we did not live in, in, a, in a world 
that has these expectations of the way that you should be able to function and the way that you should be able to move through society, disability would not exist. It's like, I tell people, it's not like, like if we got rid of racism, my ass would still be black, all right? But if we got rid of ableism, I would not be disabled. Does that make sense to y'all? It definitely does. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, like, no, go ahead, Sophia. Um, so I was gonna say that in the graphic that um, we were showing, one of the the little cartoon characters is holding a sign that says, "I believe we are valid." I think, right? So yeah. I think starting from there, I mean, anyone, any people who have any type of difference from what is considered the norm, suddenly their existence is no longer valid. So I think the first part is once you look at a person and don't see them as having a deficit, and see mm. them as a whole person with an experience that's different from yours, and an experience that may need more support, then you'll see then ableism will no longer be an issue because every single person's individual experience would be valid. I say, I say, yo. I, I will go so far as to say, like, even though, yes, okay, again, to me, like, today, we've got to accommodate, we've got to integrate, we've got to include and all of that, right? If every mode of, of like, physical in, individual elevation was a ramp, there would be no issue. If every, you know what I'm like saying, like, like, nobody like, likes it, them. like, like, nobody like, likes like them. if there wasn't a situation in which people had norms in the first place, like to me, like again, like to make people valid means to really fully make somebody that's com- like supposedly different from you valid is to get rid of this idea of a norm in the first place, right? right. And that's once right. you once you come to the idea of what it is that the people who need the most support need and literally go to them and give them what they need and then supply that to everybody guess what (laughs) it's not accommodation we all live in pretty much the damn almost the same y'all still got y'all privileges because while they you know i'm saying and y'all do it the the capitalism does it in multiple ways we will um see commercials for items that are for people with um that, that are disabled marketed to y'all for y'all convenience all the time right so it's not like it's not something that happens it's just if we would instead remove the colonial and capitalistic means behind it and just automatically go there why is not everything a ramp why does not everybody have you know what i'm saying and it's instead of why why this, are jar openers not standard right I want to, like, I want to say for a second, like, if we removed the expectations of how people's brains and bodies are supposed, and I put that in quotation marks, are supposed to function, then we can get rid of ableism, right? Mm. Because, like, we, like, in, in very, what seems to you like everyday ways, we, we build things and we build concepts of, of, of things that we, we create based off of how we think people are supposed to function. You know, we build cabinets in our, in our, in our kitchens because what? We expect that people stand, not everybody stands. And if we didn't have cabinets in the kitchens, People would need an accessibility device to reach the fucking top cabinet. You know what I'm saying? Exactly right. what I'm saying. Exactly what I'm saying. Make life, make life for the people who need the most support in general, and then everybody wins instead of like this idea of just accommodating like people and their, you know, what I'm saying disabilities because that still like sets them apart. That still sets it uh, as this thing that is somehow less because like oh now we have to bring this thing down to a level or bring this to a level no 
we're the ones doing too much in the first place. <laughs> we are the ones doing too much in the first place. Let us do less and literally just like look to our people who are who need more support and see what it is that that can do for everybody instead of like ugh. And and uh, y'all get what I'm saying. It's just it's it's the the colonial madness is so much and it's so intertwined. And again, it takes it takes the again. I'm not I'm not at all taking away from the necessity of accommodation today, right? It takes accommodation today because of the colonial shits, right? Mm. But I need y'all to have it in your mind somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need the people, all people, to have it in their mind somewhere that at the goal is to not have things be accommodated, but things be a way of life. And it's like this is what needs to happen. Ramps. Hovers, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? When we get hover technology, what else? You know what I'm saying? What you know what I'm saying? Then, then you know what I'm saying? Let's get that popping. When we come on, y'all like get like get into your imagination. And, and colonialism got y'all not even thinking imaginatively. It's a lot. It's really a lot. And as think, y'all, as holistic people, if you want to accommodate me, take some. Tell me when y'all are. Tell me the tone of whatever you're saying. If you're being sarcastic, if you're being flirty, I know that flirting and saying that you're flirting requires a certain level of vulnerability, but also like it requires a certain level of vulnerability for, from me to ask you if you're flirting. So right. you think about that. You fine, so I don't know how often people are not flirting with you. <laughs> and that's not, that's reality. I'm not being sarcastic at all. I'm being very serious. <laughs> okay. So, there's that. <laughs> so, yeah. I feel it, though. I feel it. Y'all took t- take that note. I'll put a zaddy on the end of it, you know what I'm saying, to make sure, you know, to really put it, (laughs) since we had the whole zaddy conversation. (laughs) Y'all don't know how much Jade has literally hit me to the motherfucking shit, so, like, y'all have no idea. (laughs) I'll be like, okay, yes, and screenshot it so that I can always, like... (laughs) Remember. Oh, my God. Okay, so what we on? We got some comments. Oh, wait. <laughs> so <say> Jane. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how J- um, um, Chachilia flirts. So, you know. <laughs> no, like, we thank y'all so much for joining us tonight for our season finale. Um, again... Make sure, like, y'all share this. Like, y'all get it out there. Get it out. For everyone, like, if you're watching us on Facebook, make sure you love, love and like up. and share this post on YouTube. Like, subscribe, subscribe that notification bell. Ring um, I... This we we like, can really just go on forever, and we have to be responsible and cut it off. It's and like we have people who have children on the East Coast, and it's almost 11 o'clock, and... We sprung this on people. <laughs> so we can't be having them for more than the two hours we already kept them. Thank y'all so much for coming and sitting with us under the Anukai tree. It has been amazing. We have had some amazing guests. The comments have been dope. We have unpacked the shits. And it's crazy because, of course, there's more to unpack. And we probably going to have to do a part two to this at some point anyway. And I didn't, mean to, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I kind of did want to just have like one little remark before we Yes, go. go. Okay. Okay. So I think it's very important that parents are mindful of their children who need more support. Um, it's very important that you Champagne. actually Champagne. are realistic about how much support your child needs. I think a lot of times we put our children in a situation where they're not able to thrive and reach their full potential because we minimize how much support our children may need in an attempt to normalize them. So mm. might not be realistic about the fact that, oh, you know, you might say, oh, my child is, is a little slower with speech, but she'll get there or he'll get there. And they will get there. But as a parent, we have a responsibility of making sure that we get our children 
all of the support that they need, and that includes being realistic of, about exactly what's going on with them. It's also important that you see your children as valid. So I, I've heard of the grieving process that parents go through when their child gets a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that grieving process is really a result of seeing your child being diagnosed as being negative. Mm -hmm. And sure. if you have a negative perspective, then you're going to grieve the child that you imagine when you were pregnant or you know the things that you pictured in your head that you would be doing with your child but what you really need to be doing is allowing yourself to see your child as an individual for who they are that their experience in this world is beautiful and you will get the most out of your child and your child will thrive in a way that you will never be able to imagine and you stunt their growth. You stunt their growth when you don't allow your child to access the support they need. I see, and get I see. Order, if you need most, I, 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 I'm speaking from the from New York's perspective, but I'm pretty sure that um, most will allow you to have an advocate. Sometimes parents don't really know how to navigate the educational system so when you go into iep meetings you should have an advocate and if you just google and a google iep advocate in your state you should be able to come up with some type of resource and um i am more than happy i know that um my instagram handle was placed in the comments so i'm more than happy that if anyone has any questions you can reach out to me via DM. I'm more than happy to help people navigate something that can be extremely hard to, to see through, especially when you don't have any type of experience. I'll say, I'll say, oh, thank you so much for putting yourself out there like that to the community. Um, <laughs> this is what the work looks like. It this is. is what it looks like and I feel so blessed and grateful that we get to provide the platform for this work and I hope that um, you know anybody else out there in podcast land is inspired to continue this work and um, find other people to talk find these people hit these people up get them on your platforms because I haven't heard I have, you know what I'm saying I'm not a person big on the platform but I haven't heard the conversation done like this yet so um, I am just really grateful to have been a part of it and thank y'all so much for coming through. <sighs> Make sure you check out the Anukai concert. Yeah, um, can't wait till that happens. Coming through in June and we will see y'all with our summer season. Like we do our little like half season, so it'll be like season four point five with the like our, our decolonize series as you, per usual. And then we'll see y'all again in the fall. But thank you for sitting with us, for always sitting with us. Um, and yeah. Oh, make sure. All right, right. I almost forgot. Graphicas. Oh, it's um. So make sure you follow us on Facebook at facebookcom slash tree. and then um, or you can like you can subscribe to our podcast on Spotify. And on, we're on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to us on Instagram at uh, A New Country. Everything is A New Country. And check us out. And we'll see y'all again very, very soon. All right. Good night. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>